them are here. And we are very proud for this collaboration with Venice Production Bridge. I'm also very happy that the president of Venice Production Bridge is here on stage, also later with us. Pa <laughs> Pascal Liu. So. And I guess it's important. Our market is getting bigger and bigger. We have lots of students who study some kind of the film industry, production gets bigger in Europe, also distribution in cinemas. But often we don't talk with each other, we just focus on ourselves, on our work. But our vision is to bring and combine this all together. I don't want to talk much right now. We have now a panel about to work, an international art house strategy. And that means, would it make more sense to work in kind of a holistic approach of all parts of the industry, the creating, but also the distributing parts of our industry. And I give now the floor to Christina Lollio or to Valerio Peruso. He's the director of Cine Europa, I guess, and hope you all know this website. And you give us some figures, and thank you for moderating. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you who be here. And thank you to our distinguished uh, guests. Uh, just some practical information uh, about uh, headphones, if you are using headphones. So one is for French, two is for English, three for Italian, and four for uh, German, if you have headphones. Um, I have also to uh, thank our sponsors. Um, we are within the context of a uh, CKA workshop, uh, which is financed by media by FFA from Germany, CNC, France, uh, MIBAC, Direzione Generale del Cinema, San Servo Service, and in cooperation with um, the Venice Co-Production Bridge. I wanted to start very briefly to give you some overview of uh, the distribution and exhibition market in Europe. Very briefly, some figures. It's boring, but it's important to have a, a picture, a landscape, a basis on, uh, to discuss with. Um, before giving the, the floor to Cristina Lollio and to our uh, uh, panelists. So on, on production side, this is um, from the Observatory, European uh, Observatory, and Europa Cinema, and some statistics, statistics of distribution given by the media program. Uh, in Europe, we produce 1,100 films. Um, out of uh, those films, which is important, interesting to know, is that uh, 60, um, so, uh, 600 films uh, have admission between zero and 50,000 uh, admissions. Out of those big number of films, 50 films got between uh, half million and one million admissions. And out of uh, this big number of films, again, 39 got more than 1.5 million admission in Europe. What about funding? How films are financed? Um, and how much is the budget, the financing budget? How much is the, uh, is the budget for the film? On average, 43% of the films made in Europe are less than 3 million euros, between 1 and 3 million euros. Um, if we combine um, with, uh, sorry, less than one million euro, if you combine between one and three million euros, it's uh, 55%, and only 5% of the movies made in Europe mm -hmm. are made by, uh, with a budget co uh, between 10 and 30 million euros, 4% of the, of the film made in Europe. How these films are financed, by, by whom? 93% of the films made in Europe got, in a way or another, public financing, 93%. Small countries, it's a um, um, study done by the Observatory, European Observatory in Strasbourg. Um, the small, small countries, generally, on average, of course, are financed at 60% by, by public funds. Could be direct public support, could be TV, or could be other kind of incentives. So this is the picture uh, which shows um, uh, big production, more, more, more than twice uh, US uh, blockbusters, 
few films that reach high level of admissions, quite strongly financed by public uh, national services, um, and a small proportion of total films which uh, travel um, outside their own, uh, own country. Which is interesting also about uh, uh, the statistics I got from Europa Cinema, the cinema network, is the, um, the top five films that uh, uh, got most admission within the, the network. And uh, it's interesting to see that two of them are animation. Uh, one is the, the square, in, in, we are talking about 2018. The square, which is the Cannes uh, winner. Uh, the second is uh, uh, Victoria Nandul. Third one is the Kaurismaki, The Rest Side of Hope, Loving Vincent, so a mission uh, movie. And, uh, and the fifth one, Tony Erdman. So, film that have uh, a lot of uh, uh, presence in, uh, in festival, like Tony Erdman, like the Oscar winning. So, this is the, the, the picture, the basis, on, I think we have to, to discuss and, 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 and think uh, with our guests. I would like to give the, the floor to, to Christina for 10 minute keynote, keynote speech, and then uh, uh, I will call out our speakers. Myself, first of all, I'm really a professional in this field, so with many of you we knew each other since a long time. But a little bit of story may be interesting. My, the, the beginning of my story was theater, so a, a different and close, a, an area close to the visual, close to cinema, but it was not cinema. And in theater, the, 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 the professionals were quite used to think that it was a theater in the city was an honor, a pleasure, a responsibility. So something was closer to the museum than to the cinema. That's happened many years ago because of my gray hairs. But this uh, attitude changed so much year after year for different reasons. And I'd like to go with you in this, in this story. Later on, I'll be the the director of the, of the Cinema and Theatre Association in Italy. And from there I became the, uh, the let's say, the, the, the advisor for a member of the European Parliament, uh, Mrs. Silvia Costa, and she was member for two mandates, so for 10 years, of the European Parliament's uh, Cultural Committee, and she was president of the, uh, of the CALT, so Cultural Education Committee, when the first Great in Europe was born, and now again she, she has been rapporteur for the preparation of, of the new edition 2021-2027 for the new Creative Europe. And uh, this story has something to say because Creative Europe, maybe some of you remember, when we spoke about the combination of culture and media, and also with media movies. The cinema, especially here in Venice, was very reluctant because they said, we are so different, we are an industry. What we have to, to, to share with the museums, uh, theaters, with uh, libraries and so on. And initially, the, the two worlds, they, they don't recognize each other as part of the same, uh, of the same scenario, of the same. Let's think about just a moment about that. We, we really move from, from, a, from a situation to another one, and I think for good reasons. And I strongly support what happened in the European Union, because the European Union helped all, all of us to understand that everything which is related with culture need to stay together, being a war at the same time, that there is no contradiction in being part of the industry, so producing economy, jobs, and producing ideas, identity, sharing. So that there is no, no contradiction. It's possible, it's better. Why? First of all, because we need to achieve a critical mass in order to be visible. If we are too small, we are not strong enough to achieve any result at political level, and we need it. 
and on the other side, because uh, this fracture, really, between what is art, art means supported by public money. Don't ask me how many people want to see me because I'm an artist, sorry, I have to express myself. And on the other side, I'm Martin. If, if the, 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 the admissions are there, if the tickets are there, don't ask me what I'm doing. This, these two approaches, they're both limited. We really need a much more holistic vision. That's why when CKA asked me to come here and they sh showed to me this uh, kind of strategic report that the, the members of the, of the training are, are doing these days and that uh, uh, just now, right now, Valerio introduced with, with some number. I think that we all understand that when CKA point the fact that we are facing global challenges in the field market. So we are all we all we know that the, 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 uh, to enjoy a movie now or to enjoy an audiovisual content, even in short, uh, uh, in short, is uh, something we may do on our mobiles. We will buy in short time, stopping and restarting, reloading, re reorganizing the contents. So it is much more complicated. And there is no way to, to stop the, the, the future or to stop the technology because it, it makes no sense. The only way to protect and to flourish for, for cinema and for the visual is to understand more deeply who we are and how we can support our own specific world. I have two words to, to, to say to you. One word is ask the right question to the right, to the right uh, interlocutor. Let's speak about uh, the European Union. The European Union is not as the United States. We are not a federation of states. Our 28, let's say 28 for the moment, member states they all gave to the European Union limited, a limited mission. This mission does not include culture and does not include education, as they are. But, but it happened that the European Union is evolving. And because the great media program since 1991, so for 28 years, was able to create from the reality, the need for a common training, the need to understand that our movies can stay 600 between, well, we produce, uh, let's say, a thousand movies per year. 600 of these movies doesn't have any, any history. So we have to face this problem. Why we do so? For good reasons, because each country, even if the, the population is small, has the right and the duty to give access, to give the floor to contents, to languages, to the minorities, or to, to express itself. This is the right of expression, which is part of our charter, of our Treaty of Lisbon, is in the premises, and is in the Article 3. So it means that even if culture and education they are not part of the duty to be fulfilled, so to be paid with, with the European money, in any case, there is some general, general responsibility. One of the general responsibility, which is recent and which has been introduced by the parliament, the one who does the law, is that culture is a kind of transversal dimension in all the policies. This simple is in the premises of the treaty. The, the fact that the culture is, in, is a transversal dimension gave to us the, the, the opportunity to move from the, the little amount of money and of uh, mission, in, uh, which is in charge of uh, the creating Europe, which is a specific program, is you know, dedicated, to, to move much, much forward. But let's see, before to, to go to the other programs, let's focus just a moment on media. Media, you know, moved from, moved from, from two reasons. Support the competitiveness and support the freedom of uh, the, the, the diversity. These are the two main concerns. Competitiveness and diversity. Let's say, we are European because we are diverse. We have all 
also a little bit one. And we never stress with this aspect, but this aspect is part of the national and regional duties. That's why the Europe can spend its energies and money in supporting this aspect. That's really what happened. No. Something very different happened. It happened that the uh, audiovisual ecosystem in 28 years, thanks to the little bit of money, about 3 billion of euro, was able to change our vision of the audiovisual in Europe. Now, it's almost impossible to think to produce a movie or a video game without a kind of much more general vision with an international training, uh, asking yourself, where is my market? Could I sell it abroad? Who can help me to do so? Which is the chain of value? All these aspects, they don't happen for, because of my report. They happen because of media. They happen because the European Union, combining the Commission, the Parliament, and the Council, was able to create preconditions and inside these preconditions, especially the Commission, was able to do, let's try to get a little larger. So, and you see that the, 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 the COFA proposal was being launched about cinemas as innovative hubs for innovation for cultural spaces. Do you understand what happened? Innovative, so there is technology there. Technology is created in Europe. No, technology is, uh, is mainly horizon, so it's the money of the research. The money is there. Our little, uh, little ship is, is, not, is far away from, from the money that the research has. Innovative hubs, hubs means a, a place where the people get together, the social aspect. The social aspect is relatively new. So it happened in Gothenburg uh, 18 months ago when the, when the European Union decided that on top of competitiveness and diversity, we wanted to do a social Europe. This decision was taken under strong support by the Parliament, was taken by the Council. It is the basis for the fact that now we may have a call for proposal, which is the innovative hubs for what? For communities. If communities is the money of the region, the money of the state. Is not the reason for, 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 for you, but in fact it is. Because, why? Be because everyone in his own roles has been able to push the limit to enlarge the space and to demonstrate that an art house cinema, let, let's go back and, uh, as a final remark, as an art, art house cinema is something unique in the community, is something we need, is a place for, it, it, uh, the document say it is at the heart of the of the cinema experience in the place where people get together. So, it's many things, of course. To be not only a place where a movie is shown, we have to understand that a long training is necessary. We need a lot of promotion. We need to address new audiences. You need to give the floor to, to small sections, sectors of, of our societies, and even marginalized in some cases, but, but, but they need a, a place to get together. We have really to understand our structures as at, at the service of the community. So we have to have a dialogue with our local, and we have to offer, of course, something to eat, something to drink, a nice place to stay, eventually a place for kids to, to play, a, a place for pets to, to, to stay, when the, when the, the, a place for people getting old, because the population, the European population is getting older, where uh, visual impair or people with a little bit of problems may enjoy the experience. Something to do before, something to, to do after, the opportunity to discuss. All together, this is now art house cinema. All together. So how can we do this? So we have to remember that to, to ask the European Union to answer all our questions is wrong. The, the, uh, the mission of the European Union is limited. And it is about, in fact, competitiveness, diversity, and now a little bit more of social aspects. But we have to ask our, our national, uh, our states, and even our regions, to combine their strength, mainly with European money. But it's European money who goes to a different way. And we have to be ready to jump on this situation. That's why in many of your 
in the places where, where, where you work, you understand that uh, for the for the cities where, with, a, with an industrial area which is a little uh, far, a, a little off limits, now the, the, the culture is a way to re-evaluate, to re-interpret this section of the cities where a new cinema, a new theater, a new museum, there are ways to attract audience and to give their, uh, to them a new design, bar, you know, all, all the, but there is only one approach, the holistic approach, at any level. So that's why I strongly recommend to you to support your European associations, because only through CKA or Europa Cinema, so the, you need big networks, strong enough to ask each one to do his job at European level. Of course, the Commission is uh, in charge to do, to act, but the Parliament is in charge to, to give the, the, the directions. Now we are in the phase, as you know, of the, of the final negotiation for the new Creative Europe, and the new Creative Europe includes the new media and the new transversal section, which include, again, responsibility for the G-Connect. And uh, uh, th there is some differences between what the, the, the Commission proposed, what the, the Council mainly approved with some change, and what the Parliament is suggesting. And now we, 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 we are moving in the next few months to the final negotiation. So I suggest to all of you, and in particular to the Association, to take care of the three areas because there is some content which is strongly stressed in the amendments provided by the, by the Parliament that are exactly stressing, the, especially the social aspects, something that is very close to the Art House Cinema's uh, identity. On the other end, well, there is even the, the, the problem of the money, because the Parliament would like to double the budget of the existing Creative Europe bringing it 2.8 billion of euro, now is about 1.46. It's almost exactly the double. And it's not only, only a wish, because in his own budget, the Parliament uh, put the, the, the number 2.8 billion. The Commission, who is always wiser, started with 1.8 billion, which is already an improvement of about 20%, uh, a little less, in fact, if you take the current money well, the details. But in any case, there is an advancement. Of course, the, the, the Parliament is intended to do much more. It is up to the, the final negotiation. No, none of us may, may do something, but, but the association have to speak now. Have to speak now. And also, another aspect we have to, to support and, to, and to, to ask the, 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 the European Association to do is to be strong in supporting everything which is holistic, because you may find other support and funding in the regional, everything which is related to the quality to live together, especially in remote areas, in, um, in the big cities where the, the, the inner cities are so problematic, with a community of migrants, with the recent European citizens, so there is a lot with young audience, with the archives, with everything which is related to history, uh, the history of Indonesia. Let's work on it. And of course, we have to, to, to have voices strong and, and uh, dedicated. But ask your region to do so, and ask your country to do so. And we have to act at any level with a, with a vision which is uh, integrated. And look about, uh, and look about um, research, uh, look about um, the startups, the economics, really, we need access to, to credit, to guarantee. We need guarantee facilities, and now we have, we have a farm, which is starting a little late, but that is working. So let's have a, a broader vision. And the, 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 the truly la, la, uh, last word I want to say is that everything which, which happened in the art house cinema is related to your personality. Don't give away the fact to be in a unique place. People who come to, to your cinema is looking for something different than the big multi multi screens, multi multi cinemas where they are enjoying an experience altogether, but at a mass level. 
in your cinemas, they are unique as you are unique. Because the offer is so, uh, is, is so well combined. The quality of the movie, is the quality of your smile, is the quality of the different food you are offering, is the quality of the uh, activities which are around. You, you feel and you breathe international. You understand that you are part of the trend and you feel different. That's why you are offering something which is unique. And that made the experience to the art house cinema something that you can get alone at home. You need friends, you need a community, you need new friends. You need to exert your freedom of expression and to express yourself inside the community. Thank you for inviting me. Have a good day. Thank you very much, Christina. It was just really interesting, and uh, you can see that the uh, European Parliament, European Commission fights for culture, and sometimes it's uh, from the European member states that the problem comes for historical reasons, of course, sometimes. But I would like to invite our speakers, so Lucia Ricalde from the media program, and um, Pascal Liu, um, Christine Dolfer, Director of Crossing Europe. Uh, Mira Saleva, uh, Head of Industry of the Sofia International Film Festival. Domenico Di Noria, President of uh, the Italian Art House Cinema Association. And Christian Brower, the President of CKE, and Aji Kino. I think I forgot. And Christina, if you want to, of course, intervene during our discussion, you are most welcome. And if you want, of course, ask questions, don't hesitate to take the floor. And as Christina was suggesting, I think it's a very interesting panel because uh, she, she was talking about holistic approach and I think our, here we have a very diverse, very uh, holistic panel ranging from uh, uh, industry people to uh, more uh, institutional uh, personalities. My first, first question to, to, the, to the panel is about the market situation. And do you have the, the impression that we are going towards a more concentrated market. I would like you to answer, maybe you can start answering this question. So I guess it's um, obvious that we are in a phase of market concentration. We all talk much about um, streaming market and of course for the moment at least streaming market needs for lots of people first of all Netflix, not even Amazon but we have two very big players on this side. But also in our own market, in um, the cinema market, we face a strong market concentration. Um, we all know um, Disney, the merger of Disney and Fox, uh, still happening right now. And um, if we watch the figures, and we had it in the panel before, it was a participant of the seminar um, this year. Disney has a market share in the North American market about 40%. But even in the European market, in most countries, Disney has a market share of about 30, 33%. And what is Disney doing? They produce the same amount of films since they produced 10 years ago. And if we watch on the cinema market, uh, what do we have right now in the cinemas in Europe? We have of course, Hollywood blockbusters and lots of cinemas, lots of real world cinemas, maybe not first of all art house cinemas, are dependent on these movies from um, Disney to survive. But we are in a, depend on these movies, or this year this depends on movies. The next step is, you talked a bit about, is national blockbusters. Of course, they are, port they are important. Sometimes they are crossover, usually they are more mainstream. But it depends if we have such movies or not. So, for example, in Germany we were missing them last year, and even for this reason, the national market was last year very bad for cinemas. But it didn't even stop with this point that we produce more and more films in Europe, 
but each cinema, each movie makes less and less, at least in average, admissions. We also, if we face the cinema, our own market, then we have a, a really strong market concentration. Right now in Germany, the second biggest chain is buying the biggest one, but the massive company from the United Kingdom, um, U Entertainment, is for sale. We know, know all about Odeon Group and AMC theaters, so it's not as before that we have lots of national players in the TV market. Now today the biggest player in the TV market is Netflix kind of, it's international and also in the cinema it's not again um, national chains, it's international chains. And that's what I'm very concerned about, about this tendencies of monopolization. Um, it's good, screening is a new offer. And it's a disruptive situation because we have much faster internet and it's much easier to watch movies at home and you have a good selection. It's a good selection of movies and especially TV shows. That's a reality. So far, we have to face the situation and we have just to make good cinema. The problem is, and that's a question for the future of the European film industry, um, if this big, uh, big players use their market power to have their own conditions, to avoid rules or to decide about the rules, because so far each company has to face and accept uh, rules and regulation, and it works. And we have it here, of course, with Venice, and so the festival that decided that in a competition that's usually for the big screen, for the bait of movies, to decide that there are movies that will disappear after Venice. That's a big problem for our market. And so, yes, we have this market concentration, and we also see this in Europa Cinema's network, that European independent movies do harder. It's also a question of languages. We are getting more used to speak in English, to listen to English, but the English language is a, is a language of the Hollywood market. So it's also challenges for our market when we are here standing for, and it was, um, uh, Christina said, it's about the independence of filmmaking, the independence of artistic creation. That's a big question, how is it possible when in future just a few companies decide what will get produced, what will get screened, if, or as Inna B2 said, if it's a dictatorship of algorithm. And I'm quite sure in the dictatorship of algorithm, the European independent film production won't have that much chance. Besides, we're talking about specific rules, say you're welcome in our market, but we need rules, we need fair competition, and also, of course, support. You share the um, opinions, Grayson. Um, hello. hello. Um, yes, <laughs> I have to say that I share most of them. Uh, we had a very interesting meeting in the morning. And uh, in a way, not only that I share them, I think it's a critical moment that as asso associations, as everybody who is involved in the industry, we have to be proactive. Because what we are observe, after mentioning all the figures and the reality in the market, this is an audience which is changing habits. And we have to be there and to predict where these habits are going, to observe, to pay research to some agencies, but to know how exactly the habits are developing. So we will be tomorrow there where the audience is going. And of course, uh, I'm very optimistic <laughs> because besides being industry, I'm in the role of the film festival, of a co-production market, of a distributor, of producer and cinema. So I, I observe the process from different angles, which gives me, I suppose, kind of different point of view for many. And I really think we all, we are all in the same boat. So it's time to unite efforts, the holistic approach, so we can have better results. We can uh, fight for our audience. Thank you, Christine. What what is your also managing up? So I would, we talked about David uh, against Goliath, and uh, I would uh, underline a little bit the position of David. 
uh, which are art house cinemas, which are uh, festivals also. And I believe, uh, as we uh, underlined or stressed out the social aspect, that uh, the regional players are the art house cinemas. And I believe in uh, personal strengths of personalities who really care about the audience, they know the audience, uh, they do peer-to-peer, -peer, they invite uh, communities to create own programs. So I, I want to be a little bit more optimistic. I believe that it always depends on strong personalities who are running cinemas, who are running festivals, who are working in the industry. Of course, they need money. I mean, uh, this is the main uh, topic, uh, to find the money to support uh, all the art house cinema uh, holders uh, who are uh, have not enough um, uh, staff, uh, they need more staff members, they need more um, uh, money to, to develop the technique and so on and so on. And um, I, I really um, believe in the future of cinema because of the social aspect, because of the as you said, it has to be well established, there must be a restaurant, there must be uh, a baby cinema and uh, um, uh, for grape hunters, you know, for elderly people, best agers, uh, for communities. Um, so, so, uh, but all for the specific uh, uh, topics, it's very important to get the money and to do uh, all over the year lobbying uh, for the seventh art for cinema. So the perception uh, of film uh, changed a lot and I think uh, the most important thing is to bring back the awareness that cinema is an art which is precious, which uh, is uh, uh, costly uh, and uh, cinemas are like, um, let's say, galleries or uh, um, also uh, maybe also like uh, new temples of art. Uh, where you can see all kinds of developments in uh, contemporary cinema. And the partnership between uh, festivals uh, and cinemas is always uh, sometimes under question because um, some uh, cinemas say, oh yeah, the film is working pretty well on a the festival, there is a bus, and then when we release the film, nobody is coming. Uh, that's true, but sometimes, but not always, but uh, there are a lot of examples in uh, Europe where festivals, for example, uh, the initiators of uh, new cinemas, for example, in Wroclaw, they bought uh, um, Artos Multiplex, otherwise it would have shut down. Or in Sarajevo, the festival built up um, an Artos Multiplex. So they are all also uh, initiators for, for new movements and support also the local audience and bring, and I think this is the most important aspect, uh, um, young audience back to cinema because what we are missing is uh, educational work in school for, for kids and youngsters, everybody knows, uh, but uh, how to, to get their attention and how to create this kind of coolness factor for social event cinema, uh, it is mostly festivals can create this kind of uh, uh, attraction and then uh, maybe, hopefully, when they uh, discover that it's great to watch films uh, on screen and not at home, they will maybe come back. Thank you. Because here you have a very nice uh, perspective, a European perspective, but not, not only European, because you've been also recently in uh, Los Angeles before the panel starts. You we, we were told that we're there. And what your review on, on this problem of concentration? First of all, um, simply a word to say how happy we are from the media program to be one of the entities supporting this training program. Before I answer to your question, we are happy to support your initiatives here. Um, it, yeah, it, it's true that uh, the, the concentration, we are sometimes in Europe still thinking about only about Netflix, a little bit about Amazon, but there is a new wave. I would even say in some cases there is a second tsunami that is coming with the arrival of Disney very soon. Uh, you gave us some figures, Christian, I fully agree with what you said. Uh, Apple TV, and also some Chinese, don't forget that, because the Chinese with Alibaba, and also they have purchased some cinema exhibitions, theaters in Europe, they are also 
preparing the ground to be here. So the problem is that when we said there is market concentration, is market concentration happening outside Europe? In Europe still, when we look at our industry, the main defining feature is fragmentation. It's fragmentation across geographical national borders, but it's also con fragmentation across the value chain. The American model, or even the Chinese in the future, they have a model, a vertical model going from production, promotion, and distribution. We don't have almost very few European companies that have this ability to combine the production and the distribution. And that's a big problem. So we are not going to become uh, an American industry because, as Christina said, this is not part of our DNA. We don't want that. But we need to find truly European responses to address those challenges. And from a media program perspective, the, re the response is very clear. It's collaboration. Collaboration must be the name of the next Creative Europe program. We are not going to create, we are going to support co-creation. We are going to support co-production, co-distribution, co-promotion. So everything we have to do, we need to have this collaboration perspective completely built in. And, and when it comes to cinemas, of course, we want to support collaboration between art houses across Europe. But we also think that there is opportunity for new models of collaboration between cinemas and festivals, perhaps more intense than it has been the case in the past. We think that there is a lot of uh, potential for collaboration with distributors, with producers for the promotion of the movies, because the movie has to be promoted before it goes to the cinema, otherwise you have to do all the work from the beginning, and it has to be a shared responsibility between all the, the actors, and we also think that there are opportunities for a collaboration with other cultural players, with theaters, for example, or with other entities. Because you have something which is becoming the new currency of the new economy. You have the data. You know your audiences. And, and this is becoming more and more valuable in this data-driven economy. So perhaps we have mentioned some challenges, but there are also opportunities. You have the data and you know your audiences. And your audiences like, you so how can what can you make the most out of these assets that you have? I think uh, these are, as I said, your, your I think your strong points, your knowledge of the local economy, the local audiences, and the data you have. And certainly from media, uh, we look forward to really trying to make the most out of your assets in the context of the future program. Thank you very much, Pascal. I think indeed there is a concentration which is uh, coming, but I don't feel it as a, as a nightmare or as a fool as it could be. Uh, I think it's part of the life. Uh, you will always have the big blockbusters who will be produced by major companies and so on, and you will have hard house films. The only thing is to give more visibility to the hard house uh, cinema and so on. I think you have to go exactly as they did for the blockbuster. You have to work first on the development, uh, to be honestly more rigorous about the writing of the script and everything, because it's one of, I do think the key thing in development in the hard house, when I see all the projects that we are receiving, for instance, for the co-production market. Uh, a lot of them are art house. And the problem is that all the stories have a lot of defaults uh, because they have not been really uh, thought carefully and so on. And I think it would because we are all speaking about the increasing number of films which are produced. It would probably make a steady uh, pace for all this because suddenly, and we would have films which are still have their own personality, their own uh, object of speaking about the society, about human beings, about everything, but in a way that it's also corresponding to the changes that are appearing between the, in the audience. Um, the way of story, of narrative and seeing a story is not the same as it was 20 years ago. 
we, we have also to change. And what I see when I receive, I am receiving those projects, those streets, it's exactly the same way of telling that it was 20 years ago. So it can't match with the audience, first of all. And the second thing, so if I go after that for uh, the art house cinema, I think, as Christina was saying in her keynote, it's, I am a, perhaps a dreamer, but I am a true believer uh, that we are in a transitional period and the people will have to come back to a more social life. And a heart house could be, honestly, the perfect hub for a social socialization between the people. And so the only thing is to attract the audience. I think you have, in a way, even if you are individuals, because each arts cinema house owners has his own uh, personality, his own uh, sensibility, and so on. But if you want, but most of them, finally, are looking for the same films. So, I don't know, but in order, if there are some distributors here, they will not be happy with what I can suggest, but it would be perhaps an idea of suggesting to think about a kind of uh, central purchasing entity at a national level for art house. This entity, knowing perfectly well, well all the art house sensibility and what the things they are looking, can be suddenly a more powerful interlocutor to the sales agent. It could be as powerful as a distributor, because suddenly he is gathering within hundreds of cinema, hundreds of theaters. And I think it's a way also to suddenly perhaps give more power to art house and suddenly to probably help also for the exploitation and circulation of uh, art house uh, movies. Mm -hmm. so this is, I would say, very, right. it's very interesting idea. Um, Domenico, you speak in Italian, right? Parli in Italian, okay. So I just remember you the, the headphones. Uh, with your headphones. And, uh, cosa pensi di questa idea di Pascale, in particolare sul mercato, sul mercato italiano? Sì, grazie Valerio per la domanda e sono molto d'accordo con quanto diceva adesso Pascal. Eh, partirei proprio dall'inizio della domanda perché eh, la concentrazione. A Cristina ha spiegato molto bene all'inizio la genesi del perché in Europa il cinema è entrato a far parte della cultura e... e, e da parte degli Stati la Commissione Europea viene finanziata come attività culturale. Noi oggi questo lo diamo per scontato, ma non è stato facile all'inizio far capire che il cinema doveva stare fuori dalle altre attività commerciali che non, è, non a caso non rientra negli aiuti di Stato, nel divieto di aiuti di Stato per, per, le, per le attività. E che quindi il cinema è stato riconosciuto come eccezione culturale, questa è stata la base per la quale è stato costruito il programma, il programma media. Quindi il problema della concentrazione ce lo si è posto subito, fin dall'inizio, perché era chiaro che c'era un'industria molto forte che era quella hollywoodiana rispetto a appunto, una frammentazione di, di, di produzione europea che aveva bisogno di sostegno, che aveva bisogno di, di, essere, di essere sostenuto. E, L'altro aspetto eh, fondamentale è che i, i, i progetti che sono stati messi in atto, per esempio attraverso eh, Europa Cinema, quindi la, il cercare di facilitare la distribuzione dei film, perché dal punto di vista produttivo ogni Stato faceva un grande investimento sulla produzione e tant'è vero che oggi siamo a 1100 film prodotti all'anno in Europa, ma poi c'era un un forte limite nella possibilità di esportare, di esportare questi film. E allora qui c'è un grande legame che va riconfermato tra il ruolo dei festival e il ruolo dei distributori e poi delle sale. Io fin da ragazzo quando venivo 
qui a Venezia o andavo a Cannes, il mio sogno era di vedere dei film per la prima volta e quei film lì pensare di portarli a farli vedere nella mia sala, nel mio cinema. Questo è stato il sogno di tanti esercenti di sé, di chi aveva una sala cinematografica e che voleva fare un'attività diversa da quello, che era, da quello che era il cinema commerciale. Per questo rimane non solo è fondamentale, ma se noi facciamo una inchiesta vera, una statistica, oggi i film che realmente attraversano i confini dei paesi europei e non solo, sono i film che hanno dei premi nei festival più importanti, come Venezia, come, come Cannes, come Berlino, come Locarno. Sono questi i film che poi vengono comprati dai distributori europei e distribuiti nei paesi. Ma questo possono ancora farlo se c'è una rete di sale che è, è, è disponibile, che, 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 è, che fa questi, questi film. Se, no, questa, se si interrompe questa catena diventa davvero molto, molto più difficile. E non c'è dubbio che oggi il problema della concentrazione, eh, lo diceva bene prima Christian, ci sono eh, dei film che da soli riescono ad attirare milioni e milioni di spettatori. Qui c'è un, un, una considerazione però da fare, rispetto a chi dice che la sala è morta, e allora com'è possibile che in pochi giorni milioni e milioni di spettatori vanno in sale cinematografiche anche se vanno a vedere un blockbuster? Quindi il ruolo della sala comunque esiste ed è riconosciuto. Allora il pubblico non è vero che ha abbandonato, che ha abbandonato le sale e quindi è il nostro lavoro di valorizzare l'altra parte del cinema, di come far, eh, fare un lavoro di, 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 di conoscenza, di... di di diversità e io credo che se il lavoro viene fatto bene le mie esperienze le mie sale cinematografiche in questi anni non hanno conosciuto crisi perché lavorano nella direzione di avere un rapporto diverso col pubblico di costruire un rapporto di socialità la, nuova, la vera missione la nuova davvero è la socialità io sono convinto sempre di più che se da una parte crescerà l'offerta indiscriminata di possibilità di vedere audiovisivo in qualsiasi momento, saremo bombardati da immagini, parallelamente crescerà dall'altra parte una voglia, una capacità, una necessità di costruire dei momenti di socialità e le sale cinematografiche possono essere un elemento davvero importante per ricostruire questa socialità. Hello, ah, it's working. Thank you. I will start from a consideration from Domenico about the number of films and, and marketing uh, power. Um, asking to all of you, do you think, uh, we saw that uh, there is a lot of film produced in, uh, in Europe, or more than 1,000, um, do you think that uh, Europe is producing too many films and do you think that we should give more money to single films to get a uh, bigger film. I know that the, the, the cultural diversity for smaller countries is very important, but we saw that a lot of films are not seen, are not uh, circulating, uh, that are highly financed by public funds. So what do you think? Should we should reduce the number of uh, movies made and increase the budgets? This is my first question, and maybe a question which is attached Maybe a second question that we can give answer later. We know that American films, Hollywood films, for one euro spent in production, they spend one euro in marketing, so a 50, 50 or 100 million budget films, it's equivalent in marketing and distribution. So should um, European member states uh, shift from production aid to distribution funds? Two different questions. We can start with, uh, with me and then we go. I wouldn't say that uh, the production funds should be reduced because this, this is the way we nurture and we discover talents. And finally, and let's say Europe is not equipping this um, competition. I mean, small countries are still kind of developing because let's say after 1989, all Bulgaria, Serbia, Uh, Hungary, Czech Republic, we're in a slight different situation. That's why we really kind of, we're still fighting to create a nurturing environment for our filmmakers. 
But I just think that it has to be balanced. Mm -hmm. It definitely, there is no question. It has to be balanced. Much more funding has to go to distribution because this is what we need to have these films watched by the audience. This is the missing part. And here I'm quite critical to the film uh, industry, <laughs> including us, as I said, we are distributing also, because somehow the inertia is very strong. And it's obviously clear that it doesn't work like it used to work in the 80s and the 90s. It's a different reality in the moment, and we have to consider that, to really put uh, attention to it, to see the, the paths it goes. Let's say I would use, for example, a creative agencies, and I started cooperation with them, because hot water has been discovered. So they have very interesting approaches. We are kind of a bit stuck in our circles. We communicate between ourselves. That's why cooperation is a very good word in this event. Let's try to cooperate with some people which are out of the industry, but they have creative approaches. I really believe it's a matter of creativity. I totally believe the audience is there for the films. I think the problem is how our information outreach this audience, how they find these films, how they discover curiosity to them, how we nurture this cinema theater, I mean, everything, the production, the distribution of films, the, the promotion of the films. And for this uh, program, uh, the Cinema's Innovation Hubs for the local community, it's great, it's absolutely great. The only critic that I have to say, it came in, the, uh, in July, where everybody goes on holiday and it's very difficult to make all the cooperations for one month. But I believe and I really hope that this program uh, can establish as a regular one so it will give a uh, base for all these cinema operators to really think and make uh, efficient partnerships. Be because this is it, we have, to, we have to outreach the audience out there and be creative about that but not in any case reduce the, the producing funds. I think we, we cannot make it uh, for the, on the account of the production. I fully agree, so I just can um, add, uh, maybe I'm a little bit always scared when it's uh, to, to um, when we are talking about uh, making less films, because who are the ones who won't be able anymore to make films? So it should not be the ones who are maybe doing more experimental or more uh, daring film, more eccentric uh, stuff, which is uh, hybrid, a crossover. So it uh, should not um, um, be the result that then we are looking for uh, the mainstream uh, art house, that everything is art house mainstream uh, for a special audience and, and the diversity. Uh, is gone and uh, being also in some film funds uh, in former times I know uh, how hard it is to explain filmmakers why their project is not selected and that the budget is not high enough so I also agree uh, less budget is impossible we need the budget and in terms of promoting film of course the situation changed a lot with uh, social media we uh, totally knew Marketing strategies have to work out, and that's what I also um, mentioned before for the cinemas and for the other cinemas. Uh, they need people who are skilled uh, with uh, social media because with an advert in a, in a daily newspaper or uh, with a film critic uh, in, in a newspaper, you want to uh, reach your audience. And this is also a side uh, bar uh, um, a problem I also would add that film critic nowadays is almost dying. So it's uh, film critic nowadays is more promo promotion for films, but um, uh, film critics uh, in daily newspapers are, I, I mean, less and less. And I, I know a lot of critics who are really complaining about their job. I think it's everywhere in Europe the same. So it's almost to, to really, uh, also push that there is a new generation of film critics who is able to make a living out of their job because that's the problem, they don't get paid any, any longer uh, and it's like a hobby nowadays to write film critics. So this is, I think there are so many uh, layers uh, coming together uh, but uh, talking about so many films it's also about where can we promote all these films and now uh, here comes uh, uh, the festival card. 
So festivals, of course, are the, the place like a museum, a, a curators of the museum who um, collect the most outstanding uh, curators, uh, interesting, uh, upcoming uh, talents, uh, and uh, they 